Today's fun fact. Did you know that despite the diamond being the hardest material on the planet, it will shatter to smithereens if hit by a hammer? Let's test this theory out, shall we? Whoops. So today's fun fact is that even though diamonds are incredibly hard, that just means resistance to scratching. Toughness, on the other hand, is a completely different kettle of fish altogether. Ah, the old fake diamond, hey? Who doesn't love a good fake diamond? Yep, fake diamonds. <laughs> I am. I don't think you'll be getting your fake diamond back anytime soon. <laughs> what? What do you mean we don't own any fake diamonds? <sighs> Whoops, I'm in trouble. Big, big trouble. G'day folks, Uncle Knackers here from DIY for Knuckleheads and welcome to episode six of my workshop, Hacks, Tips and Tricks video series. Now, just before we get stuck into those hammering tips and tricks, if you wanna see more videos just like this one, do yourself a favor, hit that subscribe button and while you're at it, click the notification bell. Let's get this show on the road, shall we? Apart from the hammer being a weapon of mass destruction, I'd have to say that the humble old hammer would have to be the go-to tool for all home improvement projects. In today's video, I'm going to show you eight ways to get the most out of your hammer and also show you a cool trick a little later on that will not only impress your friends, but also has the potential to earn you a few free beers as well. So make sure you keep watching for that one. For those of you out there who don't pound in nails for a living, driving in a nail can be a daunting experience, which is fair enough because hammers and delicate fingers don't really mix. So until you gain some confidence, why don't you try out these quick little tips that'll ensure that your fingers stay out of the firing line. The first option you can try is just to use a regular old bobby pin, which works really well. All you need to do is to place the nail inside the bobby pin, close it off with your fingers, and you're good to go. Option two. Now this method just simply uses an old plastic lid, which I've trimmed back. And all you need to do is with the nail that you're using, place that in a drill and drill a hole close to the edge, which I hope you can see just there. And then with some scissors, cut a slit back to where that hole is. So you'll finish up with something like that. Don't place the hole all the way back here, like on this one, with the slot going all the way back like that, because it's not going to work. Make sure it's close to the edge. Now all you need to do is get your nail, place it in the hole, and then nail away. Once you're finished, you can pull the plastic clear. Too easy. Pointy nose pliers are also a good option. And I've also seen some people use a clothes peg. How easy is that? Now this next tip is all about removing nails. And if you were to ask any old ancient Egyptian pyramid builder the best way to lift or move something, they tell you it's all about leverage. Leverage is the key. For the lever principle to work, all you have to do is place a bit of scrap, it doesn't matter what it is, up close to the nail and then slide in the claw and then just simply lift. And that comes out so easy. Love it. Now if you're doing some carpentry like building a house frame and you aren't too concerned about how that surface looks, this is a great technique. Drive the claw of the hammer hard up against the shank of the nail, just like that, and then wriggle the nail from side to side using the hammer as a pivot point and do that from side to side like that and that pulls the nail out beautifully cool just a quick side note i was going through my database 
to find a dad joke for this video and I really struggled to find one that related to a hammer. But how's this? I was going for a ride the other day, true story, and I came across this guy walking a really unusual looking dog and the dog had a hammer in his mouth. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I pull over and I say to the guy, hey mate, what sort of dog's that? And the bloke goes, it's a Labrador. <laughs> Get it? Labrador and Thor? Chris Hemsworth? It's a mixture. They mix. And that's... That's the joke. Forget it. Now if you're doing a renovating job, keep this tip in mind. Just remember that finish trim like architraves and baseboards are quite expensive and are worth keeping if you can manage to remove them from the wall in one piece. And if you do manage, try this. Okay, the great news is, is that you've managed to salvage that piece of trim you've wanted. And the first thing most people do is turn that over, see that nail, and then want to get a hammer and bang that through. But don't do that because all that does is when that hole has been puttied and painted and you bash that nail through, all it does more often than not is create a bigger hole there. So try this option instead. Turn it back over and then grab your snips or nips, whatever you want to call them. Grab the nail down the base and then just pull the nail through just like that and that will prevent that hole from becoming bigger. Driving in a nail close to the end of a piece of wood is notorious for splitting. So we can fix that by simply altering the head of the nail. And by using this in conjunction with pre-drilling, you're guaranteed of a split-free future. Try saying that fast three times. Split-free future, split-free future, split-free future, split, split-free split. Can't even say it once. Now I've got two nails here, one's normal, and this one here has been altered. All I did was with my hammer, tap the end, which took the point off it. Now the difference is, when you drive this nail in with the pointy end, that piece of wood opens up that grain and creates a split. With this one here, with the blunted end, when you drive that one in, all it does is push its way through, therefore reducing the chances of that grain opening up and the wood splitting. To demonstrate the point without any pre-drilling, we have our sharp nail and our blunt nail. So let's drive these in and see what happens. Already you can see that started the split. Let's now try the blunt nail. And as you can see, we are split free. Happy days. Now this next one is a little unorthodox, but in a pinch, it's really handy. Occasionally you'll be on a work site and you'll need a dab or two of silicon or no more gaps and you realize that you've left your corking gun at home. Never fear, the hammer gun to the rescue. So all you need to do is to place your hammer gun on the ground, place the corking gun over the handle and then just simply push down and squeeze. Keep pushing and bang. Out she comes, and Bob's your uncle. Too easy. Every now and then, my reciprocating saw will jam, and the result is often a bent blade. And a great way to straighten that is with your hammer. Just slide the claw over the blade on the point where it's bending, and then just bend it back. And there you have it. That's not too bad at all. I like it. Now if you know the length of your hammer, mine is 340 millimeters long or one foot one and a half inches, it can get you out of a tight spot if all you need is a rough measurement. And did I mention that the hammer makes for an amazing back scratcher? <laughs> that is awesome. And with that, I think it's time to show you guys that cool little trick you've all been waiting for. Let's do it. 
Now this is what you'll need to do. Grab yourself a piece of wood and then drive in a nail. Just make sure for this trick you are using a round flat head nail and not a bullet head nail like this one here. If you use one of these, the trick won't work. Now, this is where over a couple of beers or a soft drink or even a nice hot cup of tea, you ask your mates how many nails do they think they can balance on top. They'll faff around and carry on but basically one will be about the most that they can do. And this is where you make your wager and the amazing claim that you'll be able to balance 13 of these on that one nail there. Can it be done? Let's find out. Now this is where the magic happens. All you have to do is to lay one of the nails out flat like that and then with the other nails, lay them across the shank in opposite directions all the way to the end. And now if we just place the last one on, just like that, get those in position, and now with our last nail, just plonk it between those nails, and now here's the trick. We have to grab that bottom nail and lift up, and hopefully all those nails will lock in together. There you go, just like that. And now carefully place it on our nail. And there you have it. How cool is that? Pay up people. So that's it folks, eight ways to get the most out of your hammer. Great tip, knackers. <coughs> COVID. Now if you want to see more videos like the one you've just watched, make sure you click on one of my playlists which will be popping up over there shortly. Alright, well I hope you enjoyed and found that useful and if you did, a big thumbs up would be greatly appreciated. Okay, after all that, I think I'll need a cup of tea. So till next time, be good, be safe and I'm out of here. Cheers.